Welcome to the next video in my video series where I take you through every single step of building a quadcopter, configuring it, everything from a box of parts on the table to a finished quad ready to fly. In case you're wondering why I say that at the beginning of all of these videos, when you're like, you're like, I've seen it. Well, you're seen it because you're watching through the whole playlist, which is down in the video description. And you've gone to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But remember, random people on the internet are searching for things and they're finding that, hello, random person on the internet. You've come in in the middle of a playlist. I hope this video answers whatever question you had. But if you want to just build a quadcopter, go back to the first one and start from the beginning. In this video, we will install Betaflight and we will flash Betaflight to our flight controller. I'm Joshua Bardwell. I have to say that at the beginning of every video too. And you're going to learn something today. It's my tagline. When you heard me say that we were going to flash Betaflight to the flight controller, the first thing you thought might have been, why do we have to do that? Doesn't it come sort of ready to go? And yes, it sort of does. But like, if you think of Betaflight as being like, Microsoft Windows. Well, when you first get Windows, what does it do? It does a bunch of updates, right? It has to get the latest and greatest. And the version of Betaflight that comes on this flight controller is quite old. And it, as much as I would like to say, ah, skip it, just use the old one, it's better to update it to the latest and greatest. And I'm going to walk you through that. I have to say, though, this is the part where the playlists will split because I'm actually going to set this quad up two different ways. I'm going to set it up using Betaflight, and that is the firmware that is really optimized for racing and freestyle. It's very stripped down, very performance oriented, but what it doesn't do is like all that autonomous stuff. Like, you know how DJI quadcopters, you can just let go of the sticks and they just stay right where they are in midair, or you can hit a button and the DJI quad will return to home. Well, Betaflight doesn't do any of that. It's just like a race car and you have to shift the gears and you have to do everything. There's another firmware out though called iNav and iNav is tailored towards autonomous flight. And in the second half of this playlist, I'm going to go through an iNav setup because this flight controller can actually do both Betaflight and iNav. So if you're here to learn to set up Betaflight, continue. If you're wanting to set up iNav, go down to the playlist in the video description and there'll be sort of a block of Betaflight videos and then there'll be a block of iNav videos and you'll watch the iNav videos, except I'm making the Betaflight videos first because I know Betaflight really well and the iNav videos will have to come later. So if you look if you look right now, you may actually not see the iNav videos yet. They're coming or maybe they're already there. Anyway, let's do it. Let's install Betaflight. And here is the Betaflight configurator and you're going to need to install this on your computer. And in fact, there's also some drivers you're going to need to install. I have another video that I made going through all the steps of downloading and installing Betaflight and another program you're going to need called BL Heli. And rather than just sort of copy all that again, I'm going to refer you to that video, link in the video description. If you've never downloaded or installed Betaflight and BL Heli before, go follow the steps and then come on back when you've got it all installed and ready to go. Welcome back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug the flight controller into USB. And you may notice this is a little different than the last time you saw it. I've taken the video transmitter off the top and I've disconnected a few things just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to hold down this bootloader button. And holding down the bootloader button and plugging in USB at the same time is how we tell the flight controller we're going to flash new firmware to it versus just configuring it, which doesn't require you to hold down the bootloader button. So with one finger, I'm going to hold down the bootloader button and then I'm going to plug in USB. And one way that you know you've successfully plugged in in bootloader mode is that notice that none of the lights on the flight controller turned on. Watch, I'll do it again without holding down the button. So we got this blinking red light and now it's blinking at us. But when we hold down bootloader, it doesn't do that. Every flight controller is a little bit different, but they will all have a, they'll be like more subdued. There will be fewer blinky lights when you're in bootloader mode. The other way we know we're in bootloader mode is if we see DFU here in the upper right. That means we're ready to flash the flight controller. If you don't see DFU there in the upper right, then you're not, you're not going to be able to flash. You have to see that. On Windows machines, there is sometimes a problem where even when you're in bootloader mode, you don't see DFU. And the workaround for that is a little app called the Impulse RC Driver Fixer. 
you get the impulse rc driver fixer from this link i'll give it i'll put a link in the video description and when you run that app it will search for the flight controller it will install the dfu driver and it will fix the driver and when it's done you can then you'll then unplug plug back in again while holding down the bootloader button and you should see dfu in the upper right let me just reiterate that that whole impulse rc driver fixer thing you do not have to do that every time you only do that if when you plug in the usb with the bootloader button held down you do not see dfu here in the upper right and then once your drivers are fixed they'll probably stay fixed and by the way mac users don't have to deal with any of that this is exclusively a windows problem i should let you know that sometimes there's a shortcut you can use to get into dfu mode if you just plug in you see com3 here in the upper right and you connect there's actually a button right here, activate bootloader slash DFU. If you hit that button, it does the same thing as if you had plugged in while holding down the button. That's nice because sometimes it can be a little hard to get at the button or some flight controllers, the button is harder to get at than others. But that doesn't always work, whereas the button pretty much always works. So anyway, so we're going to go to the firmware flasher tab here in the upper left of the beta flight configurator. And the first thing we need to do is choose which flight controller we have and that's referred to as the target for the flight controller there are there can be multiple flight controllers that use the same target for example this one is using a target called the Maytech F405 Maytech is a vendor who makes a flight controller this is kind of like a generic version of that same flight controller so even though they're different flight controllers they both use the same target so we need to find that target in this list We'll just go down, it's alphabetical, and we'll look for the Maytech F405. And the, the specific target name you're going to want is Maytech F405 STD, parentheses, MTKS. How did I know that was the right target? Let's skip that for today. Then I'm going to choose the latest version of Betaflight, and it looks like we have 415. Um, if by the time this has come out, Betaflight 4.2 has come out, it's up to you. If you choose to flash 4.2, some of the screens you use may not match. I'm going to be working with Betaflight 4.1.5, though. Then you're going to go down here to the lower right, and you're going to hit Load Firmware. And then after it is loaded, you're going to hit Flash Firmware. And we'll see Erasing. And then after Erasing is done, it will flash. And when that's done, the flight controller will disconnect and reconnect. You should see COM3 or whatever COM port number it is on your computer. It won't always be the same number on each computer. But for me, it's COM3. And we can hit connect. And you will see this message. What you need to do when you see this is just hit apply custom defaults. And it will reboot one more time. Anytime you flash Betaflight 4.1 or newer, you see that message. You just hit that button. And then you're ready to go. And congratulations. We can now see in the upper left corner of our screen that Betaflight 415 is on this flight controller. The firmware version is Betaflight 415. Don't be confused by this configurator version. That's this configurator app itself is 1060. If you're ever trying to get tech support and they say, what version do you have? Don't tell them 1060, tell them 415, the Betaflight firmware version. And we are ready to proceed with the setup. But that's gonna be a topic for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Playlist in the video description if you need help finding the next one. Happy flying.